days when I feel the best of me is ready to begin then there are days when I feel I'm letting go and soaring on the wind I've learned in laughter When I'm on my knee I can be in a crowd or by myself Almost anywhere When I feel there's a need to talk with God In the blue sky, in the moonlight, when I'm on my knees, I get on my knees, I get on my knees, there I am before. power when I'm on my when I'm on my when I'm on my Amen. Well, good morning. Uh, we are so grateful to be able to worship together on this, this morning. And before we do so, I just have a few announcements. The church board met last week, and it was decided that we will remain strictly uh, online for worship until at least February 7th. Uh, the board will meet again on February 4th, and we'll survey where our community is in regards to the COVID numbers and then we'll make a decision on how to proceed from there. So as always, we will we'll keep you informed and in the loop as we go along. Uh, we also have a lot of ministry opportunities planned for this year. Each month we're going to focus on a particular ministry in our community, and we'll be asking for donations of items that we'll, we'll be able to drop off that will benefit those that are being served by that particular ministry. So keep on the lookout for communications in regards to our February ministry focus. And also, uh, David, guess what we forgot to do this Birthdays. month? We did, but mm -hmm. um, the first Sunday we, we weren't worshiping together. Last Sunday, I just completely forgot. Mm -hmm. And so this Sunday, let us um, honor our January birthdays, which happens just to be one with, and no anniversaries, but that's for Mary Alice Swope, and so she gets a personal birthday wish, being that she is our only January birthday. So you, you want to lead us in that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Miss Mary Happy birthday. 
We hope you had a wonderful day, Mary Alice. Her birthday was on uh, New Year's Day. So she started off the year by um, having another rotation around the sun. Um, and then one last announcement um, before we open up our worship service. Um, I know that this time of online worship can feel isolating, especially to those who can't or, or choose not to be online. And there aren't many, but, but there are a few. And I want to encourage all of you to reach out to one another. I know that you miss seeing each other's faces as David and I miss seeing yours. And, and we only get to see a, a camera lens and, and we miss seeing your faces. So let us hear from you as well. As we reach out to you, um, reach out to, to us and, and let us reach out to one another. It will do so much for our souls to stay connected in that way. Today we are continuing with our new worship series entitled Beguiled by Beauty, based on the book by Wendy Farley. And as I mentioned last week, it's easy to focus on all the, the negative that we seem to encounter. And my hope is that this series will help us shift our focus from that can, that can be dark and ugly to the beauty that is all around us at all times. And we do that by practicing ways to return the love that God has shown us so that we can fall more deeply in love with God's creation and with one another. Also with this series, there will be three video components, as I mentioned last week, to help us to contemplate the beauty of God's creation. The first will be at the opening of the service that visually will be the same each week, but the narration will correspond to the message of the sermon. And also in that video, you'll be invited to light a candle as a way to center your spirit and to signify the start of your worship time. So I encourage you to have a candle nearby for that opportunity. And then after that opening video, we will have an opportunity to respond by singing the first verse of the hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth. The second video will be for our scripture reading. And again, it'll visually correspond with the scripture each week. And then the third video will be after the sermon in what we're calling a visio divina. And it will have no narration to allow you to have your own narration. And perhaps that narration is a prayer of thanksgiving for the beauty that's being highlighted on the video, or perhaps it's a response to how God is speaking to you through the service. So let our weary souls continue to be rejuvenated through contemplating the goodness and the divineness of God's beautiful creation. A Christian mystic of the 14th century by the name of Julian Norwich lived during one of the worst centuries of human history, including the Black Death pandemic that wiped out millions of people, famines, floods, war, and corruption. And in her writing, she addresses what she believed to be the root of suffering, and that is the misplaced idea of God's rejection. Without this core belief in beauty and sacred worth, we engage in self and other destroying behaviors, inducing further suffering. Contemplative practices invite us into union with the Divine One, 
healing the wounds of forgetfulness. Let us pray. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We open to your warming presence. We remember we came from you. We affirm all beings are your beloveds. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Our prayers in this series invite us to an open-eyed experience of looking around. I invite you to look around and find something to focus on. It may be something that often reminds you of your connection to God. Or you may let your gaze wander during the prayers as a way of giving thanks for those, and thing, those things that are in your surroundings. Looking around, whether we do that with our eyes or our other senses, is how we notice the beauty in the world and in the people we encounter, but also how we notice the suffering and are called to intercede in the prayer for the healing of all. We will open and close our time of prayer with the song, Look Around. Uncertainty comes over you, just look around. When your problems seem too much to bear, unsure if there's someone who cares, just look around. Whether stranger, neighbor, family, or friend, on each other and Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings that are in our lives and the beauty of your creation, the beauty of those individuals that are in our lives and, and just the blessings that you bestow upon us. But Lord, also in this time, we have those that are heavy on our hearts, those who have lost loved ones, and Lord, it is that time is great, as we all know of someone who has lost their lives to this pandemic or, um, or knows someone who knows someone. Lots of friends of mine have lost parents and loved ones, and we lift them up and ask your, your healing and comfort upon them. Lord, we lift up those who are sick and and hurting, and we ask that your healing hand be upon them. Those who, with the uncertainty of what day-to-day -day looks like, with um, isolation and, and church being online and not being able to do the activities that we're used to doing, Lord, I ask that, that you calm their fears and, and give them hope. And then, Lord, we lift up our country to you that needs healing at this time as well that we can find a way to heal and to be unified. 
Lord, we thank you for your, your son that comes and, and demonstrates all that hope and love and peace and joy that we so need at, at this time, not only at Christmas, but every day of the year. We ask that your Holy Spirit would fill the places in which we worship, that your word would penetrate our hearts, and that our worship would be pleasing unto you. And we ask all of this in Christ's name. Sometimes it can be hard to see Life's full of possibilities So look around Each day is such a gift Embrace it and the life you live And look around Outstretched arms and many helping Give up on all your dreams and all your plans. Look around, kindness and love is ours to share. We can see it everywhere. Though it might seem like forever, look around for even in our darkest night, things are gonna be alright. We'll get through this together. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we at this time, as we prepare to hear your word, we center ourselves and, and just put aside all the things that are out, is on our minds about the coming week or the week past, just to be present in your presence. And we ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. As I mentioned, we are in the second week of our sermon series, Beguiled by Beauty based on the book by Wendy Farley. And last week we talked about taking time to notice the beauty of God's creation all around us. The beauty in the nature around us and the beauty in our fellow humans. And I pointed out that we appreciate nature by using our senses. 
we use it, use it to appreciate by using our sight, which we take in the sight of a sunrise or a sunset or the color of the leaves in the fall. We appreciate nature by using the sense of hearing, such as taking in the sounds of the birds chirping or the roar of the waves of the ocean or listening to the sound that, that the wind creates by, by moving the wind chimes. And we appreciate nature using our sense of smell, the smell of lilacs, which is my favorite flower, or, or a spring day, or even as we drive by a farm and we can appreciate all the smells of creation that, is, that being on a farm creates. However, we noted last week also that it is more difficult to appreciate God's creation of humans in the same way. Instead of appreciating as we do with nature using sight and sound and smell, we tend to use those same senses to judge others. Instead, what if we view our fellow humans through the lens of not our senses, but through the lens of the spirit, recognizing their sacred worth in God's crea as God's creation, recognizing their sacred worth as children of God and recognizing their sacred worth as the beholder of God's love. Might we appreciate others more if we remember that they were made by God and for God? And in fact, that's what our topic is today, that we sometimes forget that we are all made for and loved by God, especially in difficult times. Earlier in our opening video, I mentioned Julian of Norwich. And Julian of Norwich was from Europe in the 1300s and lived through the Black Plague, which wiped out 60% of the population. And she acknowledged that there is a great deal of suffering that is simply part of being human. And then there are times, certain times, when that suffering is widespread, such as a pandemic. But what makes this suffering so soul-destroying, she says, is that we cannot see how loved we truly are. We no longer remember that we are adored and cherished by God. And if we can reconnect to God's love for us, now, we will still suffer at times, for that is just the consequence of sin in the world. But it would not be so overwhelming. For Julian, self and God forgetfulness creates a terrible wound within us and contributes to our destructive behavior while intensifying our anguish. Perhaps that is what we've been witnessing these past couple of weeks. However, when we practice contemplative worship, it keeps both facts in front of us, that God loves us and that God is with us, even when we are unsure where the path in front of us will lead. So let us worship with reading the Psalm 16, verses 7 through 11. I praise Yahweh who guides me. Even at night, my heart teaches me. I'm always aware of your presence. You are right by my side, and nothing can shake me. My heart and my tongue sings for joy. I feel completely safe with you. Because you won't abandon me to the grave, you won't let your loved one see decay. You show me the path to life. Your presence fills me with joy. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Researchers of the brain and behavior say that humans have a negativity bias. We tend to pay more attention to and 
more easily remember negative encounters and negative interactions. It has become, it has become a protective mechanism of sorts. It keeps us safe to avoid what we perceive as harmful. And it is more likely, I assume, to flare up during times of a pandemic or political upheaval or natural disasters and corruption. True, our negative bias can keep us safe, but it can also make us miserable because it can be the, one of the things that affects our relationship with, to God and to one another. Dr. Farley in her book points out that we also have a natural tendency towards the good, both in ordinary good things and also the ultimate good, our divine good, God. A contemplative life helps us to keep our negativity bias in check. It invites us to rest secure in the knowledge that we are beloved children of God. For my morning devotion time, I'm using a book by Richard Rohr entitled, Yes, And. And one day this week, he encouraged the reader to meditate upon this sentence. Your image of God creates you. Your image of God creates you. We are all made in God's image. That is true. But the question then becomes, what image do you have of God? For the image of God that you have forms the type of person you become. Is your image of God one of where God is vengeful and violent, and spiteful? Is the image of God that you have a God that is disrespectful and hurtful? If that is your image of God, you might tend to live your life with those same qualities as well, where you are quick to lash out, quick to judge, and slow to forgive. Or is your image of God one that is powerful yet loving, a God that is patient and forgiving, a God that is full of grace. If this is your image of God, you might tend to live your life with those same qualities, seeking reconciliation rather than retaliation, seeking peace rather than control, seeking grace rather than greed. I don't know how many of you viewed the, the bishop's response that I sent out earlier this week in regards to what's happening in the country. But she mentioned that we have to be careful of how we represent Christ in the world. The Christian flag was being waved by those storming the Capitol. And Bishop Sue was adamant when she pointed out that that situation does not represent Christ. And as I thought about that statement and observation, I recalled the passage of Jesus' arrest in John 18. The followers of Jesus had their own idea of how things were going to end up. Jesus was going to be their king. Jesus was going to overthrow the Roman government. They were going to be free from oppression. However, when the soldiers arrived to arrest Jesus, that idea, that dream, that hope seemed to be falling apart right in front of them. And Peter rises up out of fear and anger and desperation and lack of faith and attacks one of the soldiers by cutting off his ear. And what does Jesus do? He tells Peter to put away his sword. And Jesus then heals the soldier he heals the very person arresting him. Jesus tells Peter, am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? I read that to mean that Jesus is telling Peter, do not focus on the negative in front of you. Focus on God instead. Don't lash out on your own agenda, but rather seek God's will first. 
Don't fear of all hope being abandoned, but remember that God is with you always. We forget to trust God. We forget to see and feel God's presence. We forget that we were made for God. And when we do, when we forget those things, we misrepresent Christ in the world. The psalmist of our passage reminds us that one of the practices that leads us towards goodness and and keeps God's goodness close so that we don't forget that God is with us is the practice of worship. Even in the midst of real suffering, we praise God. We remember the one who holds us, the one who stays with us, and the only one that can fill us with the fullness of joy. So I'd like to present to you three contemplative worship practices that you can try this coming week that will help you to remember the fact that you were made for God and that God is with you. So you might want to jot these down. And remember, to be contemplative is to see God in the ordinary. So with that, the first contemplative worship exercise is the next time you grab a blanket to wrap up in as you read or watch TV, if you're like Dan and I, you have a special blanket for watching TV. We have a his and hers blanket. I don't touch his, he doesn't touch mine. But the next time you you grab that blanket and you wrap it around you or you pull it up over you, feel the softness and the warmth and the instant comfort it brings. And think of God's love in that way. When you wrap that blanket around you, imagine that it's God's love surrounding you, hugging you, and giving you comfort and security. The second contemplative worship practice for you to try is think of someone in your life that has shown you unconditional love or has shown you grace upon grace or has shown forgiveness when you felt like you didn't deserve it. Remember the feeling of gratitude and acceptance and love that you experienced. Now apply that feeling to the love of God. No matter how wonderful that love you received from your loved one felt, God's love for you is infinitely greater, more than you can ever comprehend. So let us remember that, especially on the days when we need to feel that again. And then the third worship exercise I'd like you to contemplate upon is that statement from Richard Rohr. That statement, your image of God creates you. Your image of God creates you. This week, spend some time thinking about who God is to you. And write down those attributes and those descriptives. And then take a look at your own image. Is it the image of God? Is the image of God reflected in you and through you. And if it is anything other than love and grace and redemption, then I encourage you to go on a fact-seeking mission to discover who God is through the example of God-made flesh, through the example of Jesus Christ. We were made for God. Therefore, we must remember that God is always with us, and we are never alone on this journey called life. As we respond to God's message for us by contemplatively watching this video, keep in mind that tomorrow is a new day. 
how will you reflect the beauty of God's image in it?
Amen. The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of the Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. Amen.